Hi, today I wanted to show you one of the, the simplest ways to propagate plants. If you want to fill your garden with lovely bee-friendly plants, you could spend a fortune at the garden centre, but there's a much more sustainable and infinitely cheaper way of doing it, i.e. free. Um, so this is catmint, beautiful plant. There's a bumblebee right here. I don't know if you can quite see it. It might be out of shot, but there's a common card just there. One of the best plants for bumblebees. Um, and it takes really easily from, this is a softwood cutting, so it's June at the moment, um, which is a good time to take softwood cuttings. And let me show you what to do. It couldn't be easier. So, you want to snip some lengths of uh, plant. If you can find ones that aren't flowering at the moment, some stems that aren't flowering, that's better. But there aren't any that I can see here. Anyway, get that straight into water as quick as you can. I've taken, what, about six inches there. Let me just take a few more. It's really important to get them into water as quick as you can, especially in a warm day like today, because they'll dehydrate and wilt, and if they wilt, they've had it. Took them away, start again. Uh, Okay, and he's there. that's four. I've one more for look. There we go. Right, let's go and put these in a pot. So, here we go. So, this is just a pot, but this is actually homemade compost. Um, it's gar well, a mix of garden compost and mole hill, which I find works really well for growing plants. And normally for cuttings, people suggest having a good amount of sharp sand mixed in. It probably helps, but I find that usually um, plants, particularly catmint, which grows really easily, will take um, regardless, and it saves driving to buy sharp sand. Um, get it all straight from the garden. So, Compost. So let's start with that. So you need to cut it just below a node. So the nodes are the points where the leaves come off the stem. So there's a node, there's a node. And the nodes are where new leaves come from and where new roots come from. So having cut it there, we need to strip off the lower leaves. So that we've got this bottom node is bare and that's going into the ground and that's where the roots will spring out from. I'm going to dip it in some rooting compound. This is a hormone that stimulates the roots to grow. Not everyone likes to use these. Note it's made by my favourite company, Bayer. Hey ho. I've had this pot for about 10 years. Don't know whether it still works even. But I think it probably slightly helps to get the plant growing. But you can do it without, without the hormone, and most of the time it works anyway. Um, so it's as simple as that, and you then push it down into the ground up to this point. In the compost. Easy peasy. I'll do the others quickly. So, if it's got a flower or a bud on it, like this one has, it's best to chop it off because you don't want your cutting trying to put energy into flowering. That isn't going to help it grow. What you really want is these little side shoots to sprout. So again, we'll snip it off just below that node there. We'll get rid of the leaves and the little shoots because we don't want it trying to grow leaves underground. For this one, I'm going to strip off the next leaves as well. Then into the rooting compound and into the pot. I'm going to put several in one pot. One, they don't always all take, um, but how, the ones that don't take will just wilt. And um, any that are left, which should be most of them, will um, you can you can separate them once they look established. You can see they're starting to shoot at the top. Then Um, 
yeah, so basically you pot them up, split the little plants once they've got established, and put them in their own pots. So, four down. Last one. And give it a really good water. It's important to keep these very well watered for the next week or two until they've got their own root system. At the moment, obviously, they've got no roots, and if they get dry, they'll just die. Um, and that'll be that. You have to start again. Um, so I'll give them a good soaking and remember to water them every day for the next few days. These I'm going to put in my greenhouse. You can put them. Uh, you want to put them somewhere sheltered, basically. You don't want them to be battered by wind or whatever, because that'll do. Put them inside on a windowsill um, would do just fine, um, or a greenhouse or a cold frame, anything like that. So I did this a couple of months ago when the plants were first starting to sprout and potted the cuttings up and so this is a plant that I grew for a cutting. Um, that cutting was taken about two months ago and it shows how quickly, I mean, it's a bit straggly but that's ready to go out in the garden and it's going to look beautiful and attract lots of bees. So there you go, easiest thing in the world. Have a go at growing your own bee friendly flowers. Thank you.